ahead of uh, or behind it is the green-nosed into Europol competition of Luca Giotto. And here comes Edgar on the inside of Kaiser. Can't quite do it, though. They had GT cars in front, including the LMGT3 Championship leaders, 55. That's Duncan Cameron for the opening stint. Side by side here between the Interpol car and the AOPITF car. Dust being kicked off up on the exits. It's super, super quick through this section, Johnny, before they get into the braking zone. Again, though, a wall of GTs, and you better get used to this because they're going to be in all the wrong places into the high-speed approaches of the chicane. GT cars heavier than the prototypes. They're not as manoeuvrable. They don't have as much aero, of course, and weigh about 1,300 kilos, and they've got to thread their way through the corners at some point. So it's the job of the LMP2 drivers to dance their way by where the gaps appear. That can be very tricky, and it, it presents opportunities for the chasing opponents to close the gaps, including Luca Giotto, who's now sniffing around for that fourth-place position on Matthias Kaiser. Well, he holds the fastest lap of the race, and he also now holds the lap record in LMP2 uh, here at Imola. With the increase in power for the cars this year, that was always looking set to happen if we had good conditions. We've got that. So the new marker, 132.810, beating out the previous lap record, uh, which was Lorenzo Colombo, 2022, 133.7. That's how much 40 horsepower can make. Luca Giotto, who is a platinum driver, is going to out-muscle uh, Matthias Kaiser through the second of the revances, and Johnny Edgar very nearly ran in the back of him because he was so slow out of the corner. Yeah. In, sorry, not in chair, the Edex Sport car that has been started by... Help me out, Graham. Uh, Edex Sport is Marcus Seabert. Marcus Seabert, there we go. Paul Who's Lanchers. the new driver? Lanchers in the Ultimate LMP3. Is. There's the other replacement driver this weekend. Getting my debutante drivers mixed up briefly. As now, this is the fight for third and fourth between Lorenzo Fluxa and Luca Giotto. So Giotto has the platinum burning some precious time at the start of the race, and the inter Europol competition need to make this work as much as possible, ideally to have Luca leading the race by the time it pits for the second time to get Luca Giotto out. And he's right on the tail now of uh, an impressive silver racer from Mallorca, Lorenzo Fluxa, race winner in Barcelona at the start of the year. And uh, that's the car that stands in its way, in his way, the 37 in that uh, dark silver and blue of Cool Racing. It's a quick look inside Marcus Siebert's Edex Sport car, closing in on Bijoy Garg. Success at Le Mans for the United Autosports team, and with Bijoy as part of that crew. Side by side here. Luca Giotto looking to muscle his way through on the 37 car, Lorenzo Fluxa. Johnny Edgar, though, is keeping him very honest indeed here, cracking stuff with these two. Trying to roll through this field. Maldonado still leads. He's seven and a half seconds clear now of Ryan Cullen. So, cracking stuff at the start of the race for the Panis Racing driver. An LMP2 car, the 43 that started from pit lane. Indeed. In the classes, it is W10 Marinaldi grabbed the lead early on. Torsten Pratz and Alexander Matchell in the DK Engineering Duquesne. It's Duquesne 1 2 and has been from the start. There they are. Flux has made a mistake and that will allow Luca Giotto past the cool racing car for third position. Just a very slight error and a bit too much curb at Grassini and Giotto. Very neat and tidy indeed. He's having to get on the anchors very sharply, though, to avoid the rear of Alexander Matchell's LMP3 car, blue and red United Order Sports car with the red visor. Meanwhile, oh, this was Lorenzo Flux's error at Grassini Chiquet. The two side by side, and Giotto with the more forward momentum to get third position. Flux of the four hour races, but back in the swing of things now, just about. And how about the Vector Sport car of Ryan Cullen, who's had to be me majorly defensive there on Luca Giotto, well over to the right-hand side to attempt to keep Giotto behind. And Giotto, four wheels on the grass as a result. Well, he was never going to get out of the throttle. He was forced to do so eventually. Well, two pro am from Rodrigo Salas and the Richard Biel by TDS car, Francois Perodo in his Air Corsa car and Team Virage car as Cullen runs across the gravel and has lost those two positions. So Luca Giotto tried it a few moments ago. In fact, I reckon Vector Sports car have lost three positions now because Flux has got through as well. 
So Giotto down the inside, and it's clean to this point. And yes, Ryan Cullen on the exit of Rivazza one then runs out into the stones. The uh, car on board is one that swallowed uh, one of its two long stops. So effectively, as the car 17 ahead is under investigation, for overtaken on the yellows, and that was very tight indeed. Not the first time that car's headed onto the grass of Giotto. He was forced there by Ryan Cullen, you might remember, earlier on in the piece. He's under real pressure because Johnny Edgar is catching him hand over fist. Wow. It's under three seconds now. So Giotto had to make a move, but yeah. maybe chose the wrong place the wrong time there. 